Hey, welcome to Deep in the Plus, where each week we go deep into the Disney Plus library and pull out a hidden classic that you might have overlooked. This week's pick is from way back in the far out 60s, where cell phones weren't a thing and Kurt Russell was king. It's the computer wore tennis shoes. The students from Medfield College, led by Dexter Riley, played by Disney legend Kurt Russell, are in need of a computer in 1969. They convince businessman A.J. Arno, played by Cesar Romero, to donate one. And when it needs to be repaired, Dexter fixes it during an electrical storm and receives the shock of his life, literally. Suddenly, the computer's brain has fused with his, and he's a genius, of course. Unfortunately, he also has knowledge about Arno's illegal gambling operations, which were stored in the computer. Now, Dexter is a celebrity, but Arno wants him eliminated. What happens next? Well, grab your sneakers and hold on tight, because we're going deep in the plus. Hey guys, we're back again. This week we are reviewing the Computer War Tennis Shoes, and I have a guest host with me. It's Alicia Kaiser from WDWNT Fam and also a host of the show Muses. Alicia, uh, I gave you the task of looking through some of the movies on Disney Plus, said, hey, pick some. You picked four or five. You said all of these look horrible. I can't wait to watch them. And uh, and so out of all of them, we decided on Computer War Tennis Shoes. Are you regretting that decision? No, actually, it wasn't like the worst thing that I've ever watched. Like I even said this, it's, this isn't the worst movie I've ever seen. Great review. So I mean. Great review. Not the worst yeah. movie I've ever seen. Okay. No. All right. But, cool. but to preface, I don't like old movies. So it was like. This was, like, hard for me to be like, okay, we're going to watch a movie from 1969, but, like, I did it, and I didn't hate it, so I think that's a good step forward. Yeah, you know what? This movie is, to me, just a very fun movie. Uh, you know, for me, there's some nostalgia on it that I saw it as a little kid, not in the theaters when it came out, but I just remember seeing it as a little kid and thinking that it was kind of cool. Because to me, at the time, it kind of struck me as sort of a superhero movie. Um, if you think about it in terms of, you know, the guy is an unlikely hero, he gets these powers, uh, how is he going to use them, use them for good, use them for evil, use them to get into trouble. So to me, it has that kind of a vibe of a superhero movie, and it Again, as a kid, there weren't a lot of superhero options out there when it came to movies, not like we have today. I actually made a really interesting note when I was watching. I said, it feels like um, like an old school Disney Channel movie. Like, they could very easily take this concept, bring it into modern day where, like, he downloads, like, an iOS into his head and, like, put it on Disney Channel, and I tell you, kids would love it. Like, it just very much felt like that to me. Well, fun fact, they actually remade this movie. I don't know if you saw this in Looking Back or not, but they remade this movie uh, with uh, Kirk Cameron as uh, Dexter Riley, and, uh, and it was an ABC family movie. They redid like three or four of these classics at one point. Uh, okay. I did look to see if it was on Disney+, Plus, and it's not, so I think someday that would be neat to see if it did, but I don't remember seeing that one, so I don't know how they brought it, and again, it's not modern day 2020, but I don't know how right. they did it. Uh, I think it was 85, uh, it was either 85 or 95 when it came out, so it's been a minute since it's been out, um, and I, yeah. I, when I found that out, I was like, I wish we could watch that one too, uh, and compare and contrast. Yeah, that'd be a great follow-up. Yeah, but I, I mean, right now it's not available. Apparently they redid four of uh, Disney's classic movies. They did Freaky Friday, Escape to Witch Mountain, uh, Computer War Tennis Shoes, and The Shaggy Dog, so... All of them for TV. Mm. And then, again, like there's been three Freaky Fridays and multiple yeah. Shaggy Dogs. So um, it was interesting that they chose this one of all movies. Um, another kind of cool thing about it is Medfield, the college where they are, uh, is a mm -hmm. common, like, it's sort of a common college. Uh, they used it in multiple movies. So it was kind oh. of like, uh, like their sort of... I guess early early MCU in a way that they kind of oh. compare uh, put them all together. So the absent-minded professor uh, was part of that, and then this was part of a Dexter Riley trilogy. Yes, um, I saw there were two sequels. Yeah, gets more powers, right? Right. So in the second one, it's called uh, "Now You See Me, Now You Don't," or "Now You See Him, Now You Don't." Uh, that one's not available on Disney Plus because again, I looked for that one. I thought I. Pick that one as my deep pick, uh, and then the second, the other one was the World's Strongest Man, which is on Disney Plus, so you can check that mm -hmm. one out. Um, so, and, but it's kind of weird because it's years after, and Dexter Riley is still in college. I don't know. Uh, well, these kids didn't even look like they're old enough to be in college, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Okay. All right. So they looked young. Yeah, I get that. And what do you know Kurt Russell from modern day? Well, I guess modern day, no, you would know him from Guardians, right? Because he plays Quill's dad. So, yeah. I mean. Did you ever see Sky High? I saw Sky High. Yeah, he was the dad in that one. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, again, he's sort of, again, Disney royalty. So it's kind of yeah. cool that it all sort of ties back to this one. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting as a superhero tie-in was that Cesar Romero was in this, and he actually played the Joker on the old Adam West Batman TV show, which was around this time period, I think. I, huh. I feel like that show was 65, 66, um, okay. and this movie was 69. But not only is he playing a villain again in this, but he has also um, got this like secret, almost like Batman type wall that opens up in, into his <gasps> office. That's true. Yeah. So I mean, there's Total like Batcave moment. Right. So you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like a superhero movie. It's got yeah. that super villain. You got the the superhero. Um, yeah, I kind of dug it. But what I wanted to get from you is like how you feel like this movie plays for you. <laughs> I mean. Again, you looked at the titles, you went, all of these look awful. Um, and so how did, I went, how I is totally, this? like, I judged it, like, you know, like they say, like, don't judge a book by its cover. That's exactly what I did. I was, like, looking at years. I looked at, like, the tiny little, like, one-line blurb that Disney Plus gives you, like, when you click on it in the smart mode or whatever. And then, like, I I think it was, like, the Ugly Dachshund, this one. I forget what the other ones I picked. Million were. Dollar Duck. Yeah, like, I just looked for things that has had, like, really weird names, and when you said this one, I was like, okay, like, I'm all in. And I really went into this expecting, because like I said, like, I don't like older movies. I'm just not, that's not my thing. I mean, I get it if it is. It's just not my generation, I don't think. I mean, we're not talking Casablanca here. I mean, it's not, No. I mean, it's not that old. I mean, they have, they have that incredible green screen technology while they're driving, right? I have so many notes on so many of like the special effects and especially the audio. I have many audio complaints for this movie. Let's hear actually. it. Let's hear it. Let's go. Do it. Um, okay. Okay. I even have timestamps. So uh, um, 943, <laughs> Quigley is talking to um, not Kurt Russell, uh, Dexter. And it's really weird because when you're watching and kind of listening, I was like, something's wrong with like how this sounds to me. And I was like, but it's weird because the dialogue is syncing up to the character's voices. So that can't be it. So then I started listening and I was like, it sounds like what they did was they were filming on a soundstage, obviously. It sounds like they cut like the audio from like his character talking, went back into a booth, re-recorded it and placed that into his mouth because then at 1030, so within the same scene, still the same take, his audio completely switches, and once again, it sounds like he's talking like he was on a soundstage. And I was like, well, what have you done, Disney? Why are you doing this to me? Like, I don't know if they cleaned up the audio to put on Disney+. Plus. I don't know if this was a part of the original cut. I don't know. I don't know why they even would do it. Um, maybe the audio got jacked up, you know? I think it was probably like that when they released it. Um, okay. You know, some of the green screen effects and then, like, the stunt people they're using and things like that are definitely um, a, a little, like, you know, of the time, I guess. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. horrible, horrible, but it's not good. Um, one of the things that really got me that drove me nuts was when Dexter was driving back from picking up the computer part. Oh, my gosh. So you on yes, the he has the notes all over the window. Lightning in the rain. Yes, so he has notes all over the window. I mean, it's like the original distracted driver, right? So he has the notes all over the yeah. window, and he's got his book in front of him, and he's looking up on the notes here and everything, and that was bad enough. But then when he pulls up, <laughs> did you see this? Maybe. Okay, Continue. when he pulls up to the school to get out of the car, there's no window. Like, <gasps> he's in a dune buggy. Right. That's right, because he was soaked. Right. So all his stuff would have been soaked too. Oh, there's no, God, there's literally be. no window. It's a cut from him doing that to like the him getting out of the car, and it's a dune buggy. It's like an old oh, school goodness. like Jeep basically, and there's no window there. And so I, it's like what, what? I mean, it, it, it was really kind of a little bit kind of sloppy. But I do think that back in the day, you didn't have the ability to rewatch these movies. You would pay to see it once, no. and you'd be done. You weren't there to catch all the gaffes. You were there to see a story. So I think mm -hmm. that a lot of things like that, they probably just didn't go back and fix because it wasn't important. I got really connected to Dexter, which, like, again, I wasn't expecting to become, like, so, like, intertwined with this movie. But then, like, I did, and I was, like, really into it. And I got really concerned for Dexter because I was, like, 
one of my major concerns, like once with Dexter, is that you know he turns into a computer, quote unquote, because he's still a human and he still has very real like feelings and he's still a person. But like as soon as this happened, no one really checked on him. They brought him to like I think it was the school campus doctor. They saw like roulette wheels in his mind. They saw like computer images, and then they're like it's fine why where was like the cia where was fbi why aren't they getting a hold of this child like wouldn't this something that would be you know like that they would want to look into and then he goes on like this whirlwind trip he's in like other countries talking to like officials which that seems like a breach of national security if you ask me he's going and helping creating the the space shuttle that seems real safe like, this kid is just, like, he's a computer, but, like, how much can we really trust Dexter? We don't know. He could be, you know, I don't know. This just feels very poorly tested, in my opinion. I was okay. very worried about these poor people. Okay, so here's here's kind of something going back to what you said earlier about what would this be like if they did it today. One of the things is there's something in, in, in cinema or actually in, in most entertainment it's called a suspension of disbelief. So there's a point at which you're okay letting little things go. Mm -hmm. You're okay with the uh, assumption that Superman can fly. You have right. you you are you're okay with that. And at mm -hmm. some points now they kind of try to maybe explain that or what he's really doing. But you're okay with the fact that a man can fly. What you're not okay with is that 800 people look at him every day with glasses on and don't know that if he takes his glasses off he's Superman. So like the legit like that suspension of disbelief in this movie. There's a lot of stuff that you like maybe the at the time period people were willing to overlook that in 2020 we're just not willing to overlook. Right. Um, and especially with computers, there was a movie, um, Star Trek uh, uh, for the, uh, the Voyage Home, which was a, mm -hmm. a movie with the old Star Trek cast. And in it, um, Scotty goes to make transparent aluminum and he goes to a Mac classic computer and he just but mashes his fingers on the keyboard and all this like CAD animation comes up and I'm just like, what were like did people buy this at the time and so i wonder like with you when you're watching this movie and you see that they look into his ear and they see all the computer components inside as if it's just like a computer room in his head like if you it's were just so like weird. were you laughing at that point i think i was like i think because i knew like i saw it coming obviously like it's called the computer wears tennis shoes and like i'd read the blurb and like i knew that this kid was going to turn into a computer i didn't do any wikipedia search or anything like i just this was just from looking on Disney Plus. Um, so then I was like, okay, I know he's going to turn into a computer. But then I think I got more concerned when I saw, like, the roulette wheels and, like, the casino stuff. Because I was like, why is no one checking into this? This seems like a huge part of the story. And they're just like, nah, it's fine. I'm like, I'm okay with you being a computer. I'm not okay with you just being like, yeah, we're just going to let that part go. Like, there's something to that. Okay, so let me blow your mind on something else, hopefully, uh, about Medfield. Um so when you, uh, I don't know if you made these comparisons or not, but one of the coolest things that I think that ties this movie into our uh, Disney nerd culture that we have, that we share, is that when you ride the Figment ride, the current Figment attraction, okay. there, as you're riding through and there are doors and offices for the deans, there's actually one for Dean Higgins. <gasps> Is um, that the Dean Higgins? Because there's Dean Finder and all that, and I'm pretty sure yeah. there's Dean Higgins. But at the very least, as you come around past those Dean's doors, you see uh, a computer inside a, uh, inside a doorway with a, a, mm -hmm. a jacket, a Letterman <clears throat> jacket with an M on it from Medfield. <gasps> and then right on the floor in front of you are tennis shoes. Oh, my gosh. And so, Disney. Right? So that oh, is like my heart. clearly, I love that so much. clearly somebody who was in Imagineering went. This is the perfect place to put this, especially because you know they refer back to Professor Brainerd, and you know he was from the absent-minded professor originally, which happened at Medfield. So, mm -hmm. um, I I also think that like it it it's kind of part of Disney canon in a way. This mm -hmm. movie, especially with the the trilogy that was there. So even though it's a little bit flimsy on its premise. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like that it, it earned its place in Disney history. I love that so much. I did not know that. And that makes me, I mean, I'm like one of those weirdos that actually likes the figment ride us because I never got to see the other iterations. Um, and that makes me love it just a little bit more. There That's you go. really, really cute. 
There you go. That's really cute, Disney. Something to look for next time you're there. I see you. I see you, I see you. (laughs) Nice. Okay, let's talk about how they threw Dexter in jail. Because I feel like this is the equivalent, like, this guy is known all around the world at this point. Everyone is leaning on him, you know, like, he's been sent to, you know, do the the international diplomatic stuff. He's built the space, like, the rocket ship, whatever. And then you throw him in jail. To me, this is like throwing the Stephen Hawking of, like, their time in jail. No one would let this kid sit in jail, and that's just so unbelievable. Oh, it bothers me. Here's here's another thing, I, a little bit of a show-off moment for me, because I've actually been to the Disney Studios in Burbank um, before. Sure. And yeah, you're welcome. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a... I have not been to Tokyo like you have, so I have to, like, you know flex where I can so we can get it yeah yeah exactly so um having been there it is really interesting whenever I see something that is shot using the existing uh buildings at the Disney Studios so there are some office buildings that they use and in this one when the movie opens up and they're using the uh walkie-talkie to listen in on the dean's meeting Mm -hmm. and there uh I think it might be Peter is walking with the walkie-talkie and listening to it and headed towards you know the gang um yes you know so he's walking that way you can see the buildings in the background are the Disney movie lot now all this was shot on the Disney movie lot anyway uh the part where they're doing the tv show and uh and they kind of try to uh, the bad guys try to run away and they run into the police car that's at the security gate uh, at the Disney um, at the Disney Studios, but Aww. that is so cool to me, having been there, that I can see that and I and I know that. And then they head over to like a little table and chairs. That's actually yeah. the commissary, uh, the studio commissary where they were sitting. So it's really oh, like wow. kind of got Disney history in it as well. Um, you know, being shot on the lot where you know where Walt did his magic. Also, like. I mean, talk about budgets for that time. Like, they probably didn't have a lot of money, so what a great way to, like, save and, like, use what you have, you know, and not create a bunch of sets. Yep. Very cool stuff. That's really cute. With the car chase scene, um, I I got some major serious uh, Fast and Furious vibes. They pulled out a gun, didn't see that one coming. Kids use paint, didn't see that one coming, but smart on them. Uh it's some pretty nifty driving. You got to see a lot of cut back and forth where they were like, that's filmed on a green screen. That's an actual driver. And they just suck these two shots together. <laughs> I mean, that's how you did it. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, I've we've reviewed several <laughs> movies where I've looked at the special effects and some of them seem like they were far ahead of their time. And some of them seem like. You know, maybe the, it was a budget issue and they just did the best that they could to make it happen. I mean, I think we've all seen that happen along the way that, you know, scenes don't look the way they're supposed to. And a lot of times they'll fix it after the fact now that we have CGI. But again, 2020 audiences are a lot more <laughs> discerning audiences than a, um, you know, than the 1969 audience. And then these movies are getting a lot of replay that uh, I don't think anybody ever thought they would. No, I don't think anyone like 10 years ago have been like, everyone's going to watch the computer with tennis shoes. Not that I'm saying that everyone's going to watch it as a Disney Plus subscriber now, but like a lot more people are going to. Like, I know my parents were like, oh, it's on here. Like, all these old movies are on here again. We can watch them. We remember them when they were coming out when we were kids and stuff, you know? So so they are getting that like attention again, which I mean, good for Disney because they've just been sitting there. At least they're getting rewatched. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then here's the big. Million dollar question, Alicia. Mm-hmm. Would you recommend this movie? Can I rate it on like a scale? No. Nope. I... <laughs> Were you going to say like I give it three waltz out of five no. or something oh, like I that? I was going to give it like a six out of ten. I wasn't even going to be harsh. Um, I don't know. There's like a certain point that I would recommend it. Like I was actually like trying to to watch like an adventure movie like I had it in my head lately I was like I really want to watch like Casino Royale or like Ocean's Eleven like for some reason I've been wanting to watch those kinds of movies yeah this is exactly that this is exactly that (laughs) kind of level of adventure you yeah we just we hit that sweet spot it's exactly it's 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 a good comparison Casino Royale and Computer War Tennis Shoes same I mean if you think about it there was gambling they they did a, a bust on a gambling ring like this was like kind of filling in my adventure it had yeah. that superhero moment it had a great group of friends who were all you know working together for the same goal no you got so, me yeah 
I, I mean, there are comparisons, I'm just going to say. Um, I, I do recommend it. I don't know. If you're like me and you don't like older movies, maybe don't. Um, sorry if you're calling an older movie, Rob. Um, I swear, I wasn't alive when this movie came out. That's not, I mean, that's not why I'm saying it. I just, I mean, it's just funny to me because to me, an older movie is like How Green Was My Valley which was like the first like movie to ever win an Academy Award or some mess like that. And so I just like it to me, that's funny that this is an older movie, but it is. I mean, it is yeah. an older movie. So spoiler alert, I turned 24 this week, so it is an older movie for me. I mean, 1969 was it's the opposite of 96, really, if you flip those numbers. So, yeah. yep, yep, <laughs> um, exactly. That's how time works. Um, I really do recommend this, especially if um you were kind of like of the time or maybe like a couple years after like if you were born in like the 70s or 80s i think that you would probably really enjoy it if you're my age and you run out of things to watch on disney plus give it a watch i think that there's something to be said with looking back and watching older movies older cinema and just so that we can learn from the times but that's because i like film and i like watching older things so we learn that's just me <laughs> No, that's good. I mean, uh, and uh, that's actually why we do this is we go through, uh, you know, the Disney Plus uh, catalog to the things that maybe people might overlook. Uh, so for me, mm -hmm. though, this movie is one that I would recommend to anybody who is a Disney fan. Um, because, again, like the tie ins to the Figment ride, to the history that mm -hmm. Frank Welker and, um, you know, and, and Kurt Russell and these guys who were Disney legends uh, who are a part of this movie, um, you know, I think it's it's important. And because, of you know, it's tied into the trilogy of the Dexter Riley and, you know, Medfield, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Medfield College and all of these. I feel like it's one that should be watched if you're a Disney fan. If you're not a Disney fan, it's tough because, it's again, hard. yeah, and, and it's kind of funny. And if you go into it, I think if you go into it as it's going to be a fun little like, you know, hour and a half ish. Uh, you know, just a good watch. It's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. It's just a little dated. I think it stands the test of time better than some. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's, but I think it is not a sci-fi drama. I think it is a comedy. Um, I think it is a family <laughs> yeah. comedy and I think you could watch it with your family uh, and really enjoy it. But if you're somebody who disagrees with us, we would love to hear from you. Uh, put your comments below uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, or you can hit us up on at Deep in the Plus on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We would love to get your opinion on it. So um, thank you, and thanks, Alicia, for watching this movie. Thank you. All right, Alicia, you know how this works. You have to also give us a deep pick of the week. So you've been all through Disney+. Plus. You found something that you really like that you want to share with everybody. So tell us what your deep pick is. My ID pick is Star Wars Blips. It's um, eight short clips. They were each made in 2017. Um, they're about a minute each. It's all hand-drawn animation, and it features some of your favorite um, side characters, I guess you could say, from the Star Wars kind of series. They've got R2-D2, BB-8, C-3PO, uh, Chewie couple of appearances there may be an episode with porgs in there um like i said it's all hand-drawn animation it's completely silent so the only thing that brings you into the story is through like the movement of the characters the music the sound effects um they're all like i said a minute long but they're all really really cute really adorable really nice little additions to the star wars series um and i really like the fact that there is no dialogue because to me that's kind of a classic Disney move where they're just bringing you into the story through storytelling and there's nothing you know there's no talking or anything um, I can't recommend them more and I think that they're going to bring a smile to every Star Wars fan's face hey I'm a Star Wars fan I've you never are a Star Wars fan I've never watched them though so I'm, I'm excited the to watch them it was actually the first thing that we watched on Disney Plus. I even forget how we stumbled upon these, but they were like, we saw they were a minute long, and we were like, okay, we'll watch one, and then we ended up watching all eight because we were like, these are really cute. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny because the my pick of the week uh, is actually not so much a deep pick, um, but it is also the first thing that I watched on Disney Plus. Uh, I know, crazy, right? Uh, yeah. And it's one of the Spark shorts, uh, and it's called Kit Bull. And oh, it was Kit actually, Bull. yeah, so it was actually one of those that was nominated for an Academy Award. It did not win, um, which is fine, uh, but it was it was a really sweet little little short, and it's about eight minutes long. 
Uh, and I think that's why we I picked it first because I you know you load up Disney Plus you want to take it for a test drive. Sometimes you don't have time for an hour and a half movie, so let's just see what it looks like. And we and you know pulled up Kit Bull, and it was really cute. It's very heartwarming. Um, the animation is super uh, unique. I think there there were some vibes with the backgrounds that gave me a little bit of a Lilo and Stitch vibe, but I think in general it's a very mm-hmm. unique style of animation, uh, and a neat mix. And uh, j- like most shorts, and I don't know if this is like a prerequisite for shorts, but most shorts that Disney and Pixar do, it doesn't have dialogue. It is mostly just mm-hmm. a sweet uh, story told through images, and it's the relationship of a little kitten and a pit bull. And, uh, and, you know, they meet and their interactions together and, you know, they become friends, as you would assume in any Disney story, Disney Pixar story. Um, so it's, you know, it's just a very sweet little, uh, little short. And even though it didn't win the Academy Award, it, the fact that it was up for it and you can watch it now, um, I think is really kind of a cool thing. A lot of times if it's up for an Academy Award, you have to wait for whatever movie it was associated with to come out so you can watch it as an extra feature. Um, so I think that's a really cool, neat thing. And clearly you liked it, right? Yes. Yeah, I you... thought it was super cute. I love all the Pixar shorts though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that would be my deep pick of the week. Definitely, uh, would recommend you watching that. It's only going to take eight minutes of your time. Uh, you can watch that and, uh, maybe book in it with some forky, ask a question, make a whole night out of it. You're not in your head. No, about forky, ask a question. You're not a forky fan. Forky. Forky is, um, he's something else, man. I don't know how much Forky can ask a question I can watch. (laughs) We watched the first one, and I'm good. (laughs) Oh, who hurt you? Oh, come on. All right. Well, again, thanks for, thanks for being with me and, uh, and, and walking through the Disney Plus catalog and finding some gems. Uh, and again, if you have any comments, uh, we'd love to hear them. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye. If you like what you're watching, make sure you like and subscribe. You can also find us on social at Deep in the Plus on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you're a Disney Parks fan, don't forget to catch me and Rob on Park Center Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. on WDWNT.com.